Hello, welcome to Lunch with Linda. You are now inside Northampton Wolves. I am Linda Daniels and I am so happy that you are able to join us today. I am gonna start, I'm gonna talk about tools a little bit later on, but I'm gonna start with some other information. So if you are around and checking in with us, please say hello so that I know you're here. I don't have a drink and I'm gonna, my throat feels like it's gonna catch, but we'll, I, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. I think I will. But anyway, welcome. It is a bright and sunny day out there today here in Massachusetts. And um, we are enjoying a very mild winter, but we're supposed to get some cold next week or by this weekend. Hi, Sally. So hopefully, hi, Eileen. Hopefully you guys have some knitting in your stash, something that you're working on. Hi, Penny. Hi, Gail. All right, people are showing up. Thanks. So, thank you. Kate did bring me some water. I'm just gonna take a little sip right now. It's a dry. It just came, yeah. Yeah, I had one earlier. Okay. Great. So, the first thing, hey Dale, hey Bess, I wanted to show you was that um, I made some progress and finished a bunch of things, but one of the things that I wanted to show you, hey Bonnie, is the um, latest ranunculus that I finished. You know it's one of my favorite sweaters, and I had started one the last time that I was teaching the class and uh, got through the body, but then it just languished in the bottom of the to-do basket. Um, it needed sleeves. So isn't that the bane of our existence is doing those sleeves? But I finally got around um, to finishing it, knowing that it really doesn't take long. I can pretty much knit a sleeve in a couple of hours in an evening. Um, and so I just went ahead and did it. So this is the newest ranunculus that I knit out of the um, yearling from Bloom woolen and bloom woolen is a plant dyed here in ashfield now mass this is a worsted weight yarn and as you can see um, the sweater has two very strikingly different colors i almost i said to kate this morning when we were looking at it i said i think i actually grabbed two colors but the truth is it's the same color but because when, uh, plant dyes depend so much on the temperature of the air, the growth of the plant, um, the time that it's harvested, that both, all the skeins had the same name on it. And um, I just blithely knit away and didn't even realize that I had two very different colors until I actually went into the second skein. So this is all one skein. From the from the neck because the ranunculus is knit top down and then the rest of the sweater were the remaining skeins but it worked because of where the yeah. division fell thankfully it probably would have worked anywhere even if i had had run out here um it's the yoke patterns lend themselves so beautifully to color changes or to any kind of um gradient or dye lot changes it, it all just blends so this is still a little wet because <laughs> I just blocked it uh, yesterday but I have to say um, and if Lisa is watching the her yarn may feel a bit rough in the skein but once it's washed it really does bloom and this sweater is feeling softer and softer by the minute as it dries so um, this is a This is a uh, worsted weight yarn that we have in the store. Are you on Facebook, Kate? I'm on both, I'm toggling. Okay, because it just plopped up saying that Facebook streaming was canceled because of a force Yeah, I see thing. that on mine too. Yeah, Brianna, it does look like I um, did it on purpose and it's just the luck of the draw. Um, but if you end up with a yarn that is clearly a different dye lot that's one of the ways that you can use it do a top down um, look at your dye lots and use one on the top and then one for the body and sleeves and it will come out um, beautifully it really will 
you can see that in that sweater. So that's the latest ranunculus. I will be doing that class again. February is filled with classes that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So it won't be uh, for a little bit. We won't be doing that class probably again, not until spring. Uh, and quickly, I want to tell you that our, um, our Cape trip has sold out. We are full and uh, if you are sorry to have missed it this time, think about next year because we will be doing it every year and I will be posting pictures um, when we actually are at the Cape so you'll be able to see how much fun we're having and how well everybody's doing on the project that we're doing. But that is sold out so we can't take any more uh, people for that. You can see right behind me that great big yellow sign I think I talked about it last week. We pulled all the periwinkle sheep merino singles on sale and they are not on the website. I just want to remind you that because we have a lot of one skein of a color, two skeins of a color. So we didn't put them up on the website that you do have to come in to see them, but we've got two big baskets. That's just one of them right there um, filled with color. So if you're thinking about a shawl, um, or a gift, then you might want to come and check those out. Hi, Maureen. So I, <laughs> I had a little experience, I had a couple, uh, but one, there's only one that I remember. The second, one, the second story I don't remember. Uh, so I will have to dig deep in my brain, but I was sitting at the table helping somebody and there were a couple of customers in the store and I was by myself. So I was trying to pay attention to everybody all at once and just make sure that I was checking in with people. And um, one of the customers was somebody that I knew. She's been a customer for a long time. And after her wandering around the store for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, um, I said, Susie, are you, are you set? Are you all set? And she didn't answer me right away. And because there were other people in the store, I thought, well, maybe she just didn't realize that I had, was talking to her. Hey, Deb. And so I waited a couple more minutes. And then when she came kind of closer, to the front of the store. I said, Susie, are you okay? Are you all set? And I didn't realize she had earbuds in her ears. Oh. <laughs> now that's not the story because she then took the earbud out and said, I didn't hear you because I'm listening to you on my phone no. <laughs> 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 while I'm walking around. So she was watching one of our lives on yeah. her phone while she was checking, um, the store out and I was like, well, that's a pretty neat way to come in and shop uh, for what I have been talking about on the lives. Yeah. Because when you do come in, even if you come in on Wednesday and say to me, oh yeah, Linda, what about that thing you were talking about on Monday? It's going to take this old brain a minute <laughs> to actually go back and remember. So I, it was it was a surreal moment to have somebody in the shop listening to me on the live and talking to me live in person. <laughs> I was like, boom. Okay. Hi, Linda. Um, so that was the uh, funny thing that happened uh, this week. But like I said, it's a great way to remember, remember stuff. Am I falling down? No, I didn't talk about it. Oh, so this, what I have on um, today is a shawl that I made a long time ago and I don't remember what it is. Oh. I do remember that it is with the Rios because you have these nice little color, you know, blips, fadings in there. And this shawl pin is actually a hair pin that I bought at a craft fair quite a number of years ago as well. It just sort of slides in. You're supposed to use it in your hair, but I thought yeah. when I saw it, it was so pretty that it would make a great shawl pin as well. I don't often wear shawls or cowls. And I thought about this morning when I put it on. The main reason is because Holly says, where is lunch with Linda? So will you check Facebook? I, I put on Facebook that, should, that everyone should go over to, to YouTube. Yeah, we don't know why Facebook isn't working. We have some in store. Okay. Um, it just kicked us off basically. Yeah. A forced stop, it yeah, said. It just kicked us so off. So I don't know what that way. means. Um, we'll, we'll dive into that and try to fix that as well. But anyway, what was I saying? The pin 
Now I'm completely lost. <laughs> completely. Oh, I, I don't wear cowls or shawls all that often because as soon as I put stuff around my neck, I get really hot. I'm not right now, thankfully, but uh, for a moment, especially if I have to bounce around getting gathering stuff together. So um, I did choose the shawl today because I'm wearing this store-bought sweater underneath it. Um, and it's really, really very nice. I'll have to dig deep in my library to figure out just exactly which pattern it is. So this is January 30th and we are saying goodbye to January and hello to February. Last year we did fly by February where I started to do a free hat pattern every week and people enjoyed that so much that we continued with a free pattern every month. This year we're talking about sock along February. So we're going to do sock classes the entire month of February. I did just put them up on the website. So Decker is going to do a magic loop class. She has been knitting socks for more than years now, ever since magic loop came out. She doesn't even know how many pairs of socks she's made because she's made so many. So she's going to be teaching magic loop um, on a size five needle, with a light worsted weight yarn. I think the sample that she did is made with Rios um, and it's a two session class. So you'll learn how to start with the magic loop and then how to turn the heel and get going on the leg in the second session. So that's one of the sock classes. Then Lucille Miller is going to do a regular traditional basic double pointed needle sock class again with worsted weight yarn, but on size um, probably seven double pointed needles with worsted weight yarns and it will be a regular um, traditional top down sock usually identified as vanilla socks and then I'll be doing a two circular needle sock class how to knit socks with two circular needles and I'll be doing it with the puffin which is the the socks that I the house socks that I showed you la last week and we still, I want the sock though. It's still on sale, it's $10 a skein. We've got some inventory left, but I did finish both socks. And if you follow us on Instagram, Kate and I just did a really fun reel this morning of um, the colors that we have left and of me wearing the socks at home in front of the fireplace. So look for, um, no, I think it's Noho Wool, right? Noho mm -hmm. Wool's yep, just, on Instagram. Just Noho Wool. Just Noho Wool on Instagram, and you will see that. So these are, this pattern is written for two circular needles, and what's special about it too is it has a real short row heel. There's no heel flap, there's no heel turning. It's all in one piece to give you that nice little turn. So look for those classes on the website. I will be sending tomorrow's email out with the list of them as well. And then Shelly is going to do a um, what's in a triangle class where you will be learning how to knit the pattern called Brass and Steam. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's a triangular shawl. And this is a great class for those of you who have taken our Learn to Knit in Three Hour class. Um, and know just a little bit about knitting, but want to expand your horizons and continue on your knitting journey. It is a great class for learning how to increase, learning how to read your knitting, learning a couple of different stitch patterns as you make a triangular shawl. It's not a very big shawl. It's a nice little neck shawl. And if you really love it, you can of course continue because a lot of these shawls start at the very top and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you will be able to decide how big you want that shawl to be. So Shelly is doing that class on the, on Saturday, February 11th, 18th and on March 4th. So again, that's on the website and I should show these cause Kate brought them over. So we've got these shawl pins. These are made for us by an artisan from Provincetown down on the Cape. And some of them have those little jewels in, an, in them and some of them don't. Some of them are just the plain silver or gold, but they can be used in your hair, not in mine because even a bobby pin falls out of my hair, it's so fine. 
Um, but if you've got hair that is thick enough to hold a grip, it will hold in here. Here's one without one of the jewel in it. But these we regularly have in stock. Almost all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was, I decided today to talk about tools um, for one main reason. I was very generously and beautifully gifted a um, pair of Ginger shears last week by one of my customers who um, listened to me when I said I don't have a pair of sharp scissors <laughs> at all. And I was blown away by that. And so Kate and I have used them to do a lot of the pom-poms. If you come by, we have a ton of white pom-poms hanging in the window. And it got me to thinking about how really, really special a really good tool is. We all use tools in one fashion or another, and we all expect them to work. So the primary reason for tools is their function. They need to um, be able to do what they're supposed to do with minimal effort on our part. They should be easy to use and do what they're supposed to do. You shouldn't have to struggle with them. And I always struggle, especially with scissors in my life. So this Ginger set of um, shears is a very treasured thing that's staying in the box and taken out when I need it and then put right back so that it doesn't end up cutting paper or stuff that it's not supposed to. But it got me to thinking about other tools uh, that we use for knitting and the tools that I've used in my life. And I am a, uh, I will confess, I am a make-do kind of person. If I need stitch markers, I'm as likely to cut scrap yarn and tie it into rings as I am to reach for a fancy fancy stitch marker. I will use a paper clip for a stitch holder or a straw for a cable needle. None of those are easy, none of them. They don't make my knitting better, they don't make my knitting faster. In fact, they can often be pretty frustrating. But in a pinch, I know how to make those things work. But then I also realized how much joy and pleasure I was getting out of things that I was using that were not only functional and did their function correctly, but that looked really nice, that were really pretty and brought me an amount, a certain amount of joy to use. And some of them are kind of silly. We've had these in for quite a while, these fun little tape measures. Now, it's a tape measure, and the tape measure basically just measures your inches. It does what it's supposed to do, and these tape measures have both inches and centimeters on them. And when it works correctly, it takes care of itself and is always neatly packed away. I have tape measures that don't come in a little package like this that are sprawling all over the place. Um, they're, and they're a mess, and they're not easy to use, even though they do their job. And there's certainly nothing to look at. They're just those big, regular, you know, $2 tape measures that you buy at the five and dime store. But it's so much fun to have something a little bit different, a little bit um, pretty, a little bit special that you can use for, as your tool for that, um, thing that you need it for. I also realized that the more special the piece is, the more likely you are to treat it with the respect that it deserves. Um, I, I can't say this enough, if you put your things away where they're supposed to be when you're done with them, then they're where they're supposed to be when you're looking for them. And I am the biggest criminal when it comes <laughs> to that because if you move my couch, you're gonna find cable needles and sewing needles all over the place. And it shouldn't be like that. I am going to make that my main mission this year to change the way I do things. And I wanna show you this, because this is a prime example of me at work. Now this was a great little um, tin, 
Newman's own peppermint tins. I mean, who can throw these little tins away? But this one's now broken. Exactly. That's why I took it to begin with. But it is now broken and I still have loaded it up with a magnet, which is a great idea, by the way. Um, I have a magnet buried in the bottom of this thing. Actually, it's on the bottom of this thing. Oh, on the outside? Yeah, on the outside. Otherwise, I can't lift anything <laughs> off. It's too strong. <laughs> but I put a magnet on the outside of it, and now all of my um, sewing needles stay in there. They do not disappear. But, but when it's in your bag, does it stay but, like that? No, because the cover's broken. Mm -hmm. So it's time to upgrade to a much prettier, whoops. <laughs> Slid right off there. Fill right off there. A much prettier case. So I, that is what I'm gonna do as soon as I'm done talking to you guys, is put everything into one of these Firefly containers that I really love the color of, and she does a beautiful job with the enamel work on it, and make it special. I'll remember this is where all of my sewing needles are, and I will take care to put it where it needs to be so that I can always find those needles. We have we usually carry the Firefly things, but we got in a bunch of smaller ones. This is from Twice Sheared Sheep, and they make these little notion tin uh no they call them marker tins yeah. so it's just again just a little metal tin but the outside has a wonderful little i think it's sticker. it's it's kind of a sticker um but it's really on there it's, co it's coated with something and they they have done some really fun designs now i was going to see if and i don't think I don't think this will actually hold. It's not big enough for um, the sewing needles, but it is big enough for stitch markers. So you can put all your stitch markers in there and keep them neat and tidy instead of a plastic bag or, or instead of this or <laughs> instead of a Tupperware container. Now this is a little bit special or a little bit different than what most of you would have at home, I expect, mainly because this is a collection of in-store markers that I usually have out on the table during class mm. if people need a marker I see. for. But this special container is really for those special stitch markers that you may have. We've talked last week about Kate using the chakra, chakra stitch markers from um mindful. mindful collection and we twice sheared sheep also make some very special stitch markers which i'll show you in a second i just want to show you some of the really fun little things that they put on the outside oh my god that is just it's a little kitty with yarn oh. a little kitty with yarn this one is our definitely our oh favorite my gosh, that one oh, I, oh, so because funny. it's just a little like yeah right tongue out yeah. Oh, Eileen, of course. Yeah. She keeps her markers in a Waterford candy dish. How yeah. beautiful is that? Is and it makes them special, right, Eileen? Or, I mean, it doesn't make, it doesn't change the function um, of the stitch marker, but God, does it make you happy? Doesn't it? And I bet I know when you got that candy dish. <laughs> so here's a set of gnomes. They're just fun really really fun and special this and this cute little this is a great little flowers. spring one now i don't know if you guys do valentine or galentine's day or palentine, or palentine whatever time <laughs> you do um what a great little just a great little little chocolate in there Ooh. wouldn't hurt either a great little gift for you or for someone else now talking about beautiful tools there are um, tools that all of us use, and then there are tools that some of us use. Because not everybody is going to want to spend a lot of money on um, what I'll call really exotic mm. kind of tools. And Twice Sheared Sheep makes 
two really exotic things that I just fell in love with and said, I know we won't sell a lot of these, but they're too beautiful not to have. So they do real jewel stitch markers. These are real turquoise. And they're, they have a figure eight loop. This is real amethyst in that shape. And they ca they're calling them snag free. Now, this is the one, Adventurine. Um, Adventurine. Of course, I love these. And I took these home, but I haven't started the project I had them in mind for. Um, but I'll let you know how they are. And it says snag free and the, the ends of the silver are inside the jewel. So I really think mm -hmm. that they uh, will live up to their name and not be, I showed them all, like mm -hmm. those are the three colors that we have, that, and not snag in your knitting or, or get the yarn caught in the knitting. But I will definitely let you know about these. These are not for everybody because they are pricey and I'll be the first to admit it. Yeah. Um, so they're really a, a very special treat as well as um, we also got in their little snips, their little scissor snips. These two, they the, they do the job, they do it well, and they also bring a certain amount of beauty to uh, the work that you have to do. And again, these are pricey, but they're a perfect little scissor. scissor. These actually do fit tightly inside this. You didn't have to scrape it, but no. it, it is a tighter fit in the little package. But I just fell in love with these as well and was like, who doesn't need 150 pairs of scissors? Um, I do in almost every single toolkit I have. I have to have at least two. Remember the, the Christmas that I told my daughter I needed scissors in my stocking. She gave me like four sets of those little squeezy snips, oh. those plastic squeezy snips. And within a week I had nice. misplaced all of them. <laughs> I know. I always want a scissor in my in my arm's reach, you know? Well, you know, that is why the Victorian ladies had those mm -hmm. things. What were they called? Somebody remembers. That had all of their tools on it, um, so it pinned to their bodice so that they had what they needed right there all the time. I think it's why we invented pockets. I also wanted to show you these um, titanium oxide scissors. They have a rainbow kind of look um to them and they're nice and sharp and pointy and that's really what we want is just sharp and um doing the job that they're supposed to do etui amy is that what it is that sounds right etui a little sewing case yeah, yeah. thanks amy and then one of the things that gets lost up there because nobody sees it are sewing pins. So we always have to pin stuff together and you know, they've come out with all these plastic um, clips. These are, these are wooden seaming pins. This is only $8, but what a pleasure to use a nice long wooden pin. It smooths in and smooths out. Really, really fun to use. So the next time you're thinking about a tool, Think about spending a little bit more or looking for that one thing that really makes you happy, makes you smile. Because I really believe that our tools now should be both functional, but also put a smile on our face. I want to show you one more thing. Oh, I want to tell you two more things. One is crochet class starts this week at the Hill Institute. If you are interested in learning how to crochet or want to advance your crochet skills, you can come on Wednesday night um, to the Hill Institute at five o'clock and sign up for the class at the class. And in March, I am going to be doing one the one day silk bag, the Corticelli silk bags um, class at the Hill. It's an all day class where I'm gonna take you from beginning to end through some traditional bags, silk bags. We'll make them bigger than they used to be, but um, we'll, I've got silk for that and we'll have kits there as well. So that's at the Hill Institute. We just got in a great big package from DHL. And whenever we get a package from DHL, that means it's from Earth Yarns. And I wanted to open it. I'm not sure, but I think, can I have those scissors? 
I think these are, this is the new 16 that I ordered for the samples that I want to knit for the, oh, it is, for the store. And it's a special order for somebody too. But this, this color is the, um, monochrome worsted weight that I need actually to make a sweater for somebody. And then here is the worsted weight 16. Oh, it comes in worsted? Yes, in worsted and fingering. And this is, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is the yarn that Emre um, talked about and he had that light blue sweater um, knit out of it and of course I, I the name of that sweater was right on the tip of my tongue um, but I'll be able to talk about it later because this is a sweater that I'm going to go home and start and man this stuff feels luscious he was just visiting another yarn store down south and I was watching their interview with him and he had the sweater on and it was just stunningly stunningly beautiful and they were talking about how this yarn has such a high micron um number to it it's just that's why they call it 16 that it feels almost softer than cashmere all right so that's my list for today that was our tool talk and a little bit about sock along february don't forget look at the website if you want to make learn how to make socks Take a look at the classes, and I hope we see you then. And all of the tins, all of the new tools that I showed you are on the website. You can take a close-up look at them um, right there and uh, see what makes you smile. In the meantime, I hope you guys have something in your lap and that you spend the afternoon at knitting. So go knit something. Bye.